Hi everyone, you've been working with this formula to find the volume of rectangular prisms. So I'm going to do a couple of more examples for you and show you some different ways to use this formula to find your volume of a rectangular prism. So I have a rectangular prism here that I've made a model of and I've labeled the length, width and height. And so those are the exact measurements that I need to find my volume. And I've created a bit of a larger model here so that you can see all the measurements as well. So I know that my length is 14 centimeters, my width is 9 centimeters, and my height is 5 centimeters. And I'm using just the centimeter unit as it is because I'm just describing length. So I just use that CM. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate length times width first. Um, I like to do this in steps and in standard algorithm just to make sure that I am doing my calculations carefully. 4 times 9 is 36, 9 times 1 is 9, plus 3 more is 12, and then I'm going to take that number and multiply by 5 for my height. 6 times 5 is 30, 2 times 5 is 10, plus 3 more is 13, 1 times 5 is 5, plus 1 more is 6. So I have a final volume of 630 centimeters, and now I have to put cubed. I know that when I find volume, I'll have to use that cubic unit, and if I were to visualize that, it would mean that 630 of those little centicubes would fill the space that this takes up. All right, now I want you to notice something about this formula right here. And that is the part that says length times width. That should look pretty familiar to you. And you should recognize it from finding the area of a rectangle or square that we've been doing before. So length times width will give you the area of one of these rectangles. And then it's just a matter of multiplying by the height. So we can also think of volume as the area of one of the faces times the height. All right, so what we can do then is if I tell you the area of the face, so right here, I'm gonna use this, what we call the horizontal face. All right, this one here that goes across like that. And I'm gonna tell you that it's 126 centimeters squared. And uh, that's very important to show the area, that unit there. And if I see that kind of measurement, I know that they're telling me the area just because of that centimeter squared there. And I've calculated that already. I've taken the length 14 times the width, which is nine, and I got 126. So in a way, I kind of skipped a step for you. And you're gonna see that in your book too. They're going to tell you what, what the area is of one of your faces. And so then you can just take that area so 126, and then multiply it by the height or the other measurement there that, you're look at, that you have on your prism. So let's try this. So six times five is 30, two times five is 10 plus three more is 13, one times five is five plus one more is six. Okay, and then again I get 630 centimeters cubed. So I get the same answer. Now let's have a look. Because I don't have to choose that horizontal face, I can give you one of these side faces here. So now I'm going to use the width and the height, okay, the 9 times 5, and I'm going to tell you that that face right here is 45. So 45, okay, and then my other missing, my other missing piece to this would be the length here, which is 14. Okay, so in this case, I'm finding the area of my face and then I have to use the length instead of the height. So you'd have to look and see which piece you're missing for, from the formula to kind of fill it in. Okay, and let's have a look here. Five times four is 20. Now I have to do some double digit long division, long multiplication. Four times four is 16 plus two more is 18. Okay, placeholder to move to my tens. Five times one is five and four times one is four. Okay, and then I'm going to add this up here. So just using my regular standard algorithm, 8 plus 5 is 13, and 4 plus 1 plus 1 is 6. Again, I get 630 centimeters cubed. 
Okay, and then I could even give you the measurement of this face here. So now I've used the length and the height together, and I've, I'm going to give you that area of 70 to use. Okay, and that means that I'm now going to be using the missing measurement here would be the width, which is nine. Okay, zero times nine is zero, and seven times nine is 63. And again, I'm getting that volume of 630 centimeters cubed. All right, so that's another strategy to use. Just use one of the, just use the area of one of your faces and then multiply by your missing piece here. So you'll see that you're gonna be given some of that different information. And the reason this works is goes right back to the rules of multiplication. And in that it says that the order of the factors does not matter. So if you go with length, height, or height, length, width, that's going to give you the same result regardless of the order, okay? And again, that's because in multiplication, the order of the factors do not matter. We'll still get the same answer. This still will equal the same product. So just a couple of different ways to find your air volume of your rectangular prisms. So keeping in mind all of this that we've learned, and I really have a look at those models in your book. They're going to shade in some um, faces that they're going to have you use the area for and then have you think about why this might work. So remember everything that I've told you and work carefully through your calculations. I would really suggest, you know, doing them one step at a time. But once you have the area, then it only becomes a two-step problem. It only becomes um, a one step problem here rather than having two steps. So this kind of cuts it down a bit. Anyway, be careful with your calculations and have fun finding the volume.